Hi, this is Kevin Knebel in beautiful Monument, Colorado, and I want to say thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your busy day to watch this brief video, which is part of the Schweike Media Business Booster webinar series. This video is called the 15-minute daily habits which lead to Twitter success. And uh, this is a fun topic because Twitter is a lot of fun. A lot of people have kind of mixed uh, ideas about what Twitter is. A lot of people think, oh, Twitter, that's uh, a bunch of 13-year-olds talking about SpongeBob and Kim Kardashian. Well, not necessarily. I, I mean, a phone could be about 13-year-olds talking about SpongeBob and Kim Kardashian. If all you did was use a phone to call 13-year-olds and talk about SpongeBob and Kim Kardashian. So obviously we're not going to talk about that. And when I teach, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever it is, at the end of the day, this is a communication platform. And a communication platform is really only as good as the communication skills of the person that's using the communication tool. So Twitter Phenomenal tool, 300 million users worldwide, an absolute gold mine for business in many, many different aspects. Today, I'm going to show you what I do when I get on Twitter every day. Now, when I teach this kind of stuff, as I'm teaching it to you right now, understand you're going to be drinking from a fire hydrant a little bit for the next 15 minutes. But when you learn how to apply the principles, the strategies, and the routines that I teach, over time, it doesn't take a lot of time. It takes basically 15 minutes a day, but small efforts repeated over time produce massive results. So Twitter, I'm very blessed that I'm an international speaker and author. I speak all around the world on a weekly basis on how to use what I call old-school, high-touch relationship networking and sales skills and combine that with new-school, high-tech skills such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. So um, let's just jump into it. Anyway, so right now you're looking at my Twitter uh, my Twitter account. Now, let me put a disclaimer in here at the beginning that when you're dealing with a platform like Twitter, I have no control over what I'm going to see when I open this up. So if I see anything off color or dirty or risque, I'm going to hit the refresh button as quickly as I can to go to another screen, but don't get mad at me. I have no control over what's coming down the pike in Twitter. Now, if you have not watched my the original video in this Twitter series from Schweiky Media, I would suggest you go back and watch that one, which talks about how to set up your account so everything I'm teaching you now is built on the framework from that original webinar. So every morning I have very simple things that I do every single morning when I get on Twitter. The first thing I do is, now again, let me put a disclaimer, the way I use Twitter may be a little bit different than the way you use Twitter. So please take that into consideration. Take what I'm suggesting as guidelines, not necessarily you have to do everything the way I do. I, I really operate a lot in gratitude, and what I mean by that is I'm very, very thankful. I live a life of gratitude, so I get up every morning, and I thank God for another day. So if you, when you look here at my Twitter account, you can actually see back earlier this morning, the first thing I did was I thank God for another day. Now, again, I'm not trying to preach at you. I also stopped measuring my life in weeks, months, years, and decades a long time ago. So today is my 18,431st day alive. So the first thing I do every morning is I post something, whatever. But the next thing I do, I've learned over time, is very different from what most other people do. I'm a big believer that if somebody gives you a compliment, you would say thank you to them. That's just a, that's a polite, that's what polite people do. The challenge is people get on social media and they sometimes forget the etiquette or the, the manners that they have when they're not on the internet. So I actually call internet etiquette, internet etiquette. Internet etiquette, pretty clever, huh? So what I do every day when I get on Twitter is like I open up my Twitter account, I click on notifications, and this will give me a real-time chronological um, idea of who is engaging with me on Twitter. So what I do, if you look over here, I can see two hours ago the most recent person to follow me was here. Four hours ago somebody retweeted something. So I can go back in time. So what I do is I go back to yesterday. Yesterday was June 3rd. I go back to June 3rd. I keep seeing the June 3rd, June 3rd, June 3rd, June 3rd, June 3rd, June 3rd. I get down to June 3rd, and I see that somebody favorited something that I posted yesterday. And if I click on this person, I can see who they are. So I can take their handle, their Twitter handle, at Robert Haddow 2 and I thank that person. I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. I can see the next one. This person favorited something that I posted. 
I can click on their name, Lee Brown Remax. I love Lee. She's awesome down in North Carolina. And I will publicly thank her. I can see that Jim favorited something. I can see that somebody favorited something. I can see somebody retweet. So what I do is I look back over the previous 24 hours. I find anybody that is engaging with my content, engaging being defined as clicking the like, share, comment, retweet. You know, across social media platforms on Facebook, we've got what do we have? We have like, comment, and share. On LinkedIn, you can actually like things, you can share, you can – so the basic concept of like, comment, and share is pretty consistent across social media platforms. So what I'm doing is when I use the word engagement, when I say I'm looking to see who's engaging with me, what I mean by that is they're either liking something I posted, they're commenting on something I posted, or they're sharing or retweeting something that I posted. So I can look back over the last day, and you can actually see that I get what I would consider to be a pretty healthy amount of engagement on a daily basis. So here's June 3rd. Let's just kind of dig through here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16. So, so you can see there's dozens. So what I do then is I actually publicly thank those people. So if we went back to my homepage, you could actually see, if you look back through my tweets from earlier today, you can see that I did exactly what I'm telling you. So here's those people, Lee Brown, Jim Holmes. So I'm publicly thanking these people. And when I thank them with their handle, with their Twitter name, it will show up in their notification folder. They will probably appreciate that because that's called courtesy, and that might open up a conversation. So at the very least, I'm at least publicly thanking people for engaging in my content. Most people, when they look at your Twitter feed, when they look at your account and they read over the last couple of days of what you've been posting, and, and when I teach longer programs on social selling and relationship marketing, part of what I'm teaching is if I'm trying to get an understanding of who somebody is, I am going to go look at their social footprint. Now, that does not mean that I'm stalking. It doesn't mean that I'm in any way trying to violate somebody's privacy. But Steve, who started this recording, if I went onto LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and I typed his name into those three platforms, or Google, or YouTube, I could probably pretty quickly get a feel for who he is, what he thinks about, what he talks about, how he ticks. Matter of fact, if I followed you around for a couple of days and I just listened to everything you said, I'd probably figure out pretty quickly what, how you operate. Again, I'm not trying to be a psychologist here. I'm not trying to be a stalker. I'm just saying if I can kind of figure out what makes you tick, well, then I can find sincere, authentic ways to engage with you and to, and to deliver value to you over time. And if you've been watching this, the videos that I've created um, at the kind request of the folks at Schleiky Media, you've kind of figured out how I operate. A lot of what I teach really is rooted in just opening up conversations and taking kind of a pay it forward mentality to the marketplace. I'm not saying give away the store. I'm not saying that I'm Mother Teresa or Gandhi or an Eagle Scout. But when you really, in a more and more interconnected world, adopt a pay it forward kind of mentality and you're looking for engagement opportunities, you kind of become a mosquito in a nudist colony of opportunities. I mean, life gets pretty sweet. So what I'm doing here, is I'm publicly acknowledging these people, and they're going to see that, and that may or may not open up a conversation. So that's what I do every morning. The first thing I do is I go on Twitter. I thank God for another day, but I'm not saying you should do that. Then I click on notifications. I see who is engaging with my content in whatever manner, like, comment, share, retweet, whatever, and then I publicly thank them. And, again, let me just show you how I do that. I publicly say, let's go back here. And this is what I do. Now, I'm a little goofy, so my language is a little goofy, so that's just me. But I say, thanks for your kind comments, faves, which is short for favorites, and RTs, which is short for retweets. So I'm publicly thanking them. Then what I do is I post something every day. Now, I'm a big believer, and if you've watched any of my videos on the LinkedIn stuff or anything on Facebook or whatever that I've created already um, as part of this library, I'm a big believer that you should really adopt what I refer to as an 80-20 rule. And an 80-20 rule is very simple. An 80-20 rule basically says that 80% of anything that you post on social media should not be about you or your product or service. And the mentality behind this is very simple. 
when you watch television, when I turn on a Broncos game, and you should be watching the Broncos, by the way, no matter where in the country you are watching this video, but when you, when you turn on a Broncos game, you know that you're, you're, you're turning it on to watch the game, but sooner or later there's going to be a Coors commercial. There's going to be some kind of commercial for beer or something like that, but you didn't turn it on for the Coors commercial. You turned it on for the football game. Well, take that same kind of approach to social media because if all you talk about is your product or service or yourself, who's going to want to follow that? Right? Unless you're Kim Kardashian, I guess. Um, the only thing I have in, co in common with Kim Kardashian is our initials and match. I never even thought of that until just now. But, but unless you, you don't want to be talking about yourself too much because it's just a turnoff. But if you're delivering value 80% of the time, well, then you've earned the right to talk about yourself or your product or your service 20% of the time. So just take a common sense approach to that. So the 80% of the stuff that you should post, in my opinion, should be a combination of educational and inspirational information, educational and, and informational and inspirational. Now, I'm not saying that you have to become a motivational speaker or anything like that, but most people have enough stress and crap in their lives, and they don't need to hear about somebody complaining and moaning and groaning on Twitter. So you can just post something that will kind of lift them up. Well, I come up every morning, and I actually create some kind of a picture. Now, I'm an author. You, you, you're probably not an author. Maybe you are. I don't know. So here you can see that yesterday I created a picture. And maybe in another video in this series I can go and get into, and I'll talk to Steve later about this, about possibly showing you how I create these pictures every morning. It's very simple. It takes me literally 60 to 90 seconds to do this. But it goes viral because I've got my logo in the corner, and no matter where it goes, it will always come back to me so people can find me and they can engage with me and do business with me. So I create these, but I'm not saying you have to create these. You could very easily go to Google and just type in motivational quotes. You'd have enough motivational quotes and pictures for the next 10 lifetimes. Times. So I've just developed the habit of every morning of posting something that's kind of a pick-me-up, and I say good morning. And then I also do the hashtag with good morning, so if anybody clicks on the hashtag good morning, they're going to find my tweets in that hashtag. So that's every day you want to post something at least once a day. We want you to develop the habit of posting at least one thing a day because you're developing your Twitter muscles. You're doing your push-ups. You're also showing people when they get on Twitter and they look at your news feed that you're actually engaged and you are participating on this platform. You're not just a card-carrying member. You're actually delivering value to the platform. So I post something in the morning, and I would suggest you post another thing in the afternoon. Okay? And in another video in the series, I'll get into maybe deeper into what you should post every day. In this video, 15-minute daily habits which lead to Twitter success, I'm giving you a high-level understanding of what I do every morning. The next thing I do, this is another thing that I do that I've learned over time is quite different from what most other people do. I go to where it says followers, and I click on the followers. Now, this will show you all of the people that are following you on Twitter with the newest people in chronological order. So Jay here, who actually I hold in very high regard, he's a very, very smart social media guy. I really respect this guy. So the fact that he's following me is a huge compliment to me. But what I do is I can see that this guy just started following me. So did she. So did this person. So did this person. And then going back in time, you can see that I'm already following these people back. So let me show you what I do. The first thing I do is I look at the newest person, which is not going to have the following next to it, and I say to myself, who is Stephanie Neal? Now, off the top of my head, I don't know who this lady is, so I could click on her name, and I could see who is Stephanie Neal. Oh, she's a research analyst, blah, blah, blah. She's in Pittsburgh. I can see she's a real-life human being. She's not some kind of a porn site or a gambling site or a spam bot or something like that, and I have no reason not to follow her back. I'm a big believer in following people back. Not everybody has that same philosophy as I do, but you got me on the webinar, so you're getting my opinion. The next thing I do is I go to the last person from yesterday. I click on the gear. I go down to send a direct message, and I copy my standard message, and I go back to Stephanie. I follow Stephanie, and again, just like I said a few moments ago, if you're going to be polite to people offline, be polite to them online. Well, I follow Stephanie. And then what most people do at this point is they just go on with their life. Well, t in my opinion, she's given me a big compliment. She decided to follow me. I think I should at least say thank you and possibly open up a conversation. So I click the gear. I hit send a direct message. 
I paste my message in and I change the first name to Stephanie. Now, I'm kind of weird. I'm openly disclosing that, and you are going to figure it out anyway, unless you already knew it. Here's the message I'm sending Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. You're cooler than a 64-color box of crayons, the one with the built-in sharpener. P.S. This isn't an autoresponder. And I send that to her. Now, you might be sitting there watching this video going, oh, my God, that's the stupidest thing I ever saw in my life. Um, okay, I'll nod politely when you talk, but this has opened up millions of dollars in revenue in my business and for my clients. Now, what I want you to take away from this is that notice I didn't type, hi, Stephanie, please hire me to speak at your annual convention, or do you need a coach, or maybe I could help you deliver some kind of a social media strategy to your business, because that's what I call kissing on the first date. Kissing on the first date is a really good way to get slapped. So what most people do on social media is, number one, they don't open up a conversation. Number two, for the rare ones that do, they're usually pitching their product or service in a thinly veiled or often not so thinly veiled sales pitch. Well, there's nothing worse than that. When you connect with somebody, whether it's on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and the first communication they have with you is buy my product, I mean, come on, give me a break. Are you kidding me? So for me, I like to throw some humor in. I like to have some fun. Hey, Stephanie, you're cooler than it. I'll tell you this, nobody else is sending her a message like that. So you might be asking, well, Kevin, what kind of response rate do you get on that? I get a huge response rate on that, and that's all I want. All I want is a response, because if I get a response, according to Webster, we are now in conversation. And at the core of any success you've ever had in your life, it was rooted in a conversation somewhere. Now, I'm not trying to get, you know, get real deep and, and get woo-woo on you, but for me, if you ever work with me, either individually or you hear me on a stage or I, I end up coaching you or you buy one of my books or something, you're going to figure out at the core of just about everything I teach, it's all about conversations. If you can open up enough conversations that are sincere and authentic, you will never worry about business again for the rest of your life. So I'm going to send this, and then I ask myself, is this somebody that I would want to put in one of my lists? It's not, but if I wanted to, I would just add her to the appropriate list of mine. Let me just do one more. Now, this one here, this is something that I would consider spam. I have no interest in paying somebody 30 bucks for 5,000 false Twitter followers. So I hit the gear, I go to block, because I never want to hear anything from this person ever again, and I block them. I call that the nuclear option, but I have very little patience or tolerance for people that are just trying to sell me a bunch of fraud, and I, I don't get me started. Let's go to the next one. Who's Kara Stiletto, millennial speaker, author, consultant? Let's click on her name. Who is she? I can look at her, at her tweets. I can see what she talks about. This is a live human being. She's a fellow speaker. I go back. I'm now going to follow her. Then I'm going to hit send a direct message. I'm going to change the first name to Kara because she probably doesn't want to be called J2R, and she's either going to respond to that or she's not. I could put her into a category if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Here's the last one, Jay Palter. Now, this guy here, this is a, this guy is actually a pretty famous guy, and he's brilliant, so you should follow this guy. So I'm not even going to click on his name. I know who he is. So I click follow. I hit send a direct message. I put in Jay's name. I send that to him, and I am going to put him in a category. I'm going to put him into my social selling – where's my social selling category? Into my <laughs> – man, my brain is fried. Social selling and relationship marketing. And now he's in two lists for me so that when I get on Twitter and I open up the list, I, I will see his tweets directly. So that's my standard 15-minute daily habits which lead to Twitter success. Just as a recap, very quickly – I get up in the morning, I open up my Twitter account. First thing I do every morning is I post something where I just say, thanks for another day. Again, I'm not saying you have to do that. I click on notifications to see who is engaging with my content. You can actually see that Jay followed me eight minutes ago during the recording of this webinar you're watching. Then I publicly thank those people. I go back 24 hours. I publicly thank those people in my Twitter feed. Then I post some kind of an inspirational or motivational picture in the morning, and I'm going to post something else in the afternoon that's either educational or inspirational. Then I figure out who's following me. 
I determine whether I want to follow them back. Then I hit follow back. I send them a personal message to possibly open up a conversation. That message is in no way, shape, manner, shape, manner or form in any way a sales pitch. It's just a friendly conversation starter. Then I determine whether or not I want to put them into a list and let the games begin. That's what I do. It's my simple 15-minute daily habits which lead to Twitter success. I hope that's been helpful. I would encourage you to go to kevinkenevel.com, my website, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. It usually comes out on Tuesdays with tips to help you create, nurture, and deepen business relationships, which lead to massive revenue for your business and all kinds of other good, fun things. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me if I can help or serve you in any way. I am as close as the phone or email. I give you my word as a gentleman that I will help you any way that I can. And I want to say thank you again to Schweike Media Business Booster Webinar Series for asking me to participate in this webinar. I hope you've seen value in it, and I hope to see you in another video in this series down the road. Have a great day, and God bless.